night, February 26, 2017. This is another water level sensor using capacitive measurement. This is using the uh, NXP MPR 121 IC. Um, and that is what we see on this. A uh, little breakout board here. This is an eBay one that cost a dollar to Arduino Uno uh, cabling that goes down to this uh, piece of sty clear styrene. It's flat piece with uh, copper tape stuck down to it in a ladder type of a shape, and it, that you can see the the ladder going down here longer. I've got these chopped off at one inch and I, got, I have imperfect spacing between them uh, and so on which results in a little bit of air and what an inch is. And this extra long one here is it was an afterthought. This is on the opposite side of the, of the piece of styrene as the other ones that I have. There's eight of them on here. Uh, and that just is that's a ground and ideally we'd have a ground that was the full width of this so that it would be an equal distance from each one of these fingers that are sticking down uh, to the ground in this case the amount of error that results from having the ground like this is less than the amount of error amount of change that there is in one inch movement so we don't see that and, and then I've got a, a picture of water here that I'm going to dip this in and then these numbers over here on the left hand side are going to show us when they light up when they detect the water so this bottom one is zero and you can see that touching it with my finger makes it see a one so let's put the water on there and this works within the resolution of of the one inch. So there's one. Let's see here. There's there's one and two, and then there's uncertainty up till three. And I can't see four because the ground is over it. And and four might actually be a dead spot because of this. The ground actually goes directly over the four. Uh, four, five, I think, six, and then that's that's the depth of of my uh, my pitcher of water. So there's nothing else to see there on this thing. So let's have a look at that at the sensor by itself, and we can look at the software too. Okay. So, so I've got the sensor hanging off the edge of the bench here and it's in a Ziploc bag just to keep it dry. These, the MPR121 has 12 inputs and I only used eight of them, and the reason I used eight of them was was just because uh, making them inch apart uh, was gonna gonna make it eight inches, and I only had a six inch piece, or I only had an eight inch piece. It would have to be 12 inches. So here's the piece of styrene uh, ground on this back side here somewhere. Well, actually, the ground is grounds over here I think no this is the ground right here comes up um, and it's wired on nothing nothing very interesting here other than this method I, I did this method because it was the easiest a way that would produce an even sharper response would be to orient the strips uh, orienting the strips across this way 
and then having a shielded cable coming down to it so that it wouldn't see the difference, see changes in capacitance along that, would make a stronger signal. Um, and maybe you would do that if you're going to measure a, a container by wrapping rings around the container and wiring it to it, you, it makes sense to do that. Uh, like if you were going to measure, if you had a plastic uh, coffee maker and you wanted to see how much, uh, what the level in the brew side was, uh, then that way could work. And this copper tape seems to be fine. It, it, it's, it's nice and wide. But anyway, that's pretty much all there is to this system. There is there is logic involved. Let's uh, let's look at uh, and there are a bunch of libraries, a bunch of Arduino libraries for the uh, MPR one twenty one. And here's the one I used. This one is lower level. Most of them are very much tuned to touch detection, whereas this one I found uh, had a uh, had the ability to read the raw responses from the chip, from the sensor chip. Uh, let's see if I can see that. And then they allow you to tune all of these low-level parameters, which I haven't done. And there are occasionally anomalies when you reset and so on. So there's so if you're going to make a practical sensor out of this, you'd have to read the data sheet carefully, uh, which uh, if we just do... Uh, there we go. There's the data sheet. So you'd have to read all, however many pages there are there, 27 pages very carefully, to find out how to turn off auto calibration modes. You can see it's got all of these auto calibration modes and uh, modes for slide bars and touch wheels and so on, because we want to be able to go through a reset and see the same amount of capacitance produce the same result each time. We're not trying to detect touches. In the touch case, they want it to work with, when, you, when you hold it in your hand on a wet day, they want to detect touches. And then when you hold it in a gloved hand or a rubber glove, it still can detect touches. And we want the raw data, probably like the slide, slide bar where you're sliding your finger across the contact and the value gets greater. So that's the MPR121 level detector. It seems to work fine. You could measure 12 discrete levels and with with essentially no noise uh, because there's uh, a big gap uh, in response between each one. It goes from very low level to very high level when the water gets to it. Uh, and so by having that stair step type of a, a set of 12 fingers, you can get uh, a nice discrete uh, level measurement. So maybe better for, say, a tank level than for a stream gauge, unless you only care about a small number of discrete levels. It's February 26, 2017.